Hello everyone, so today I'm going to take a moment and walk through the steps of solving a division problem using area model. Um, so when we have a division problem, I'm going to go ahead and just draw that box that um, will represent our area model. And so I'm going to go ahead and just label what we do know about this problem. <clears throat> and so I'm looking at my problem and I know my divisor is going to be 7. Now a divisor is the number that's trying to go into our dividend. It's that number that's typically smaller that we want to know how many times it can get into our larger number. And so what I like to tell people is, all right, it's like it's knocking at the door trying to get in. <clears throat> now our dividend is that larger number that we're going to be ending up breaking apart into smaller groups. And then on top will be our quotient. Now you can already start to see this is very similar to multiplica our multiplication area model. However, we just don't have our top number but we are still able to use multiplication to help get us to that point. So when we start our division problem, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. We wanna ask ourselves, how many times can seven go into 224? And we're gonna break it up just a little bit so we don't have to do that huge number. And so when I think about my multiples of seven, and in general, any multiple, one of the easiest things that you can always multiply by number is 10. So I'm going to go to the side here and kind of start listing my multiples of 10. 7 times 10 we know is 70. So let me look. All right, well, that gets me closer to 224, but there's probably something that could get me even closer. So instead of 10, let me try 7 times 20. Now, 7 times 20 would be 140. Well, we got closer, but there's probably a chance we can get even closer to that. Let's move on to seven times 30, and that would be 210. Now we've gotten pretty close, but I'm gonna go ahead and check my next multiple of 10, just to see if it would still get us anywhere closer without going over. And so I do seven times 40, and I get 280. Now this is too much, we only have 224. So we're just going to go ahead and go back to 7 times 30. So when I go back to my area model, this is a great place to start and will help us get a little bit closer to finding what our quotient is. So when we want to use multiplication, we're going to put that number on top. And similar to multiplication, we're going to go 30 times 7 equals 210. Now, we're subtracting here because that means We've used up 210 of that original 224, but we still have some more to go. So let's figure out how much more we have to go. So we know that this is 4, and that's going to be 1, and that's 0. 14. So I still have to 14 more to go to get somehow divvy up that 14 that's left. So I am going to move it over to the next box. So it's going to go up and over. So then I have to ask myself, all right. You can ask how many times can seven go into 14 or what can I multiply by seven to get 14? Well, we can do seven times two and get 14 exactly and have zero left over. And that means I've used the complete 224 and that means I have finally come to my answer, but I'm not complete yet. I still have these partial quotients up here and so I need to go ahead and add these together and I would get 32. And so this would be the steps to take when trying to solve a division problem that does not have a remainder.